Well, I hope you had a merry, 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 merry Christmas, if you celebrate. But it's time to learn things again. It's Fun Facts with Discord! Number nine? Number nine, yeah. Before it was used for comedy, the banana skin was considered a public hazard. The slip on a banana peel gag has been a staple of stage and screen humor since at least the early 1900s. Can you imagine if we never used it for comedy, though? It just stayed a public hazard? It's like, hey, dude, if you're coming up for lunch, you want to take 32nd Street. 33rd Street's got banana peels all over it, and it's just, it's a bad time, man. Randy broke both of his legs going up that way. Spice isn't a taste. It's an acid that's confusing your brain, thinking it's pain. This is also why if you rub chili on your skin, it burns. Yes, it is called capsaicin, and it is a weird little chemical that makes your nerves in your brain think that you are experiencing pain, like being on fire. So it's going to do everything it can to get it out. When Dr. Seuss was first taking art classes, he would look at what he was working on in all different directions, especially upside down. He only took the class a few times before the teacher told him, That's not how you look at art. And he never went back again. At the founding of the first McDonald's, Ray Kroc and Coca-Cola executive named Waddy Pratt. Waddy Pratt. Waddy Pratt? Waddy Pratt? That guy entered into a gentleman's handshake agreement that all McDonald's would offer Coca-Cola exclusively. Both companies continue to honor this agreement. As a former business law student, I can tell you one thing. Handshake agreements are still within legal bounds, so of course they would commit to it. Back in 1659, the Puritans in Boston banned the observation of Christmas due to its satanic practices that Puritans saw as unruly and disgusting malformations of how Christ would be celebrated. The ban was later reappealed in 1681, but celebrating Christmas wasn't fashionable since the mid-19th century, in which corporations and the media gave Christmas the image of a time of feasts and gift-giving to help boost sales at that time of the year. And it worked. If voice actors want to moonlight for other roles they have been called for, they simply credit themselves under fake names in those side jobs rather than their real names. Moonlight. Yes, that's a fancy way of saying they gonna do hentai or other fan service anime. And yes, it's absolutely true. Ancient Greece was pretty gay. No, seriously, Heracles had several male lovers on top of four wives. In fact, several heroes and heroines had same-sex partners as well as hetero partners. In fact, they even had a god and a temple dedicated to male lovers. The goddess Aphrodite, indeed, had several gods just dedicated to LGBT love, such as the Erotes, Eros Himeros, and Pothos. Hermes was said to bestow qualities of beauty, loyalty, strength, and eloquence on male lovers, while Aphrodite was the patron of lesbians. There was even an androgynous version of her in Cyprus named Aphroditus, who would then become Hermaphroditus. Please, please tell me I got those names right. I do not want another Persephone situation. I did not sleep for three days after that. Carrots are actually harmful to rabbits. According to RSPCA, 11% of all pet rabbits have tooth decay as a result of hitting the orange stuff too hard. Plus, with a high amount of sugar, they could cause obesity. So please treat carrots for rabbits like treating us with desserts. Make it a mega mega man! 2 had the first ending cinematic. It starts right after the defeat of Dr. Wily. Dr. Wily falls to the floor, begging for forgiveness. He's taken into custody, and that's it. Right? Wrong! The next scene starts with Mega Man walking as a spotlight shows over him and a village is behind him. The seasons change from cherry blossom, spring, summer, winter, and monsoon. It's in Japan. The final shot is of his helmet on the ground, alone on a hill above a large village. This is a stark contrast to when the games begin, him standing alone on top of a large skyscraper as his helmet slowly warped in on top of his head. This is also a stark contrast compared to other games of the time. Most games just had scenes from the game as credits roll, followed by a thanks for playing, I guess. There isn't a thanks for playing in this game. Instead, it's just a melancholy walk to an unknown destination. No messages whatsoever to the player, leaving Mega Man's fate as ambiguous. And then they made, like, four more games, and then, like, the X-Series, and then they brought it back, so... Yeah. The Jurassic Park dinosaurs we all know and love today, albeit incredibly inaccurate now, were actually made to be as accurate to what the vision of dinosaurs at the time was. 
Granted, you still had six-foot velociraptors and frilled dilophosauruses, but looking past the details made for entertainment purposes, the dinosaurs were meant to be as accurate to dinosaur knowledge at the time. And then Jurassic World was like, nah, man, these are just way too cool, so we're just gonna keep making them that way, and they actually acknowledge it in the film, and the scientist says, yeah, we we have the information, but these are just cooler. And he said it exactly like that. Go go look it up. I quote for you right here. Yeah, we just put them in because it just looks cooler. Your muscles are actually strong enough to rip themselves off your bones if your body lets you. Your body naturally limits how much force you can use at any one time to prevent this. But in extreme situations, people have tapped into this raw power to gain what's known as hysterical strength, letting them do things like lift burning helicopters off of people. And in case you didn't know, that's what inspired All Might's quirk, okay? Jumping the shark, according to our good old friend Wikipedia, is most commonly used in reference to unsuccessful gimmicks for promoting something. It is similar to past its peak, but more specifically suggests an unwillingness to acknowledge the failing. Basically, it is when a show decides to go completely off track from the original storyline of the show, and it begins declining in quality and likability. The turn comes from fifth season episode from the 1990s, wait, 1990s? Sitcom Happy Days when the storyline completely straight off course just to show off the water skiing skills of Henry Winkler, the actor for Fonzie. Fonzie, while visiting Los Angeles, is challenged for his bravery by water skiing and jumping over a confined shark. It is said that the overall story of the show was downhill from there. I mean, yes, but did Happy Days really have a story worth following? I don't know. And... Finally, in the movie Elf, the Jack in the Box testing scene had to be a bit more elaborate to be believable. Will Ferrell was situated on the set with Jack in the Boxes, while one of them was remote controlled and the director was off camera with the remote. The reactions of Will Ferrell was genuine because the director waited for just the right moment to set it off. Seeing how mad Buddy was at that Jack in the Box makes it that much funnier. See, I had a feeling, because it's just one of those, I like, because Jack in the Boxes are so random, how do you get that to actually work? And now, yeah, I know. And now you all know. And I have no funny way of signing this off, so bye. Yeah, bye.